So hello everybody, this is Alba Wyman and I wanted you to join me today because I wanted to explain to you something that happened to me in Peru which changed my life. And uh, not only did I want to explain to you what happened, but also getting information from the other people who were with me and also uh, tell you a little bit about what happened in my past life regression, which really wasn't a past life. I wanted to know what happened uh, during this incident. Uh, we've got um, Jill Cole. Hi. We've got um, S S Sabrina Etheridge, and we've got Laura Weaver. And I just wanted to tell you, uh, from my point of view, what happened that day in, in Peru and what happened on the way up to um, the incident that happened. And I call this my rebirthing. When we met in, what was it, in Lima, uh, I had just finished some of my hypnosis sessions. I had some hypno hypnosis sessions when I was there. And on the last day of hypnosis, we were going to get together to meet for dinner. And um, Jill was there. I don't, Sabrina and Laura, you weren't there. But as I was crossing the street to go into the restaurant area, I heard very clearly in my mind a voice very strong saying, From this point on, your life will never be the same. And it was a really startling uh, revelation when I heard this. And, and it was, it sounded really gloomy, you know, like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? So, you know, we had dinner, it was fine. And then we went over to, to, Cusco, uh, to Cusco and uh, we were going to do a gathering in Cusco and uh, Blair Styra, who channels Tabash, was going to co-host uh, the, the gathering. And that's when some of you ladies came, came on and uh, I met you there. But the day before I met, uh, we did the gathering, I got a text from Blair saying that Tabash wanted to talk with me and that we wanted to talk about what we were going to do at the gathering. So when I went, I was told at that meeting that I was going to die on that trip. But I was told, don't worry, um, you are going to reincarnate um, as, as something new, as, as a new you. And I didn't understand what that meant at that time. You know, I really kind of brushed it off. And, you know, how do you get ready for something like that? So. The day after the gathering is when we started our tour of Cusco. We went to a place that had really big stones. And uh, I know that I was very tired after, you know, after that. And we went to a, a different place after the big stones. And it was kind of like a cave, a stone with a big cave. That's all I remember. Isn't this the one that had the big cross? in front of it too I, mean, yeah, I don't know but when i was on the when i was on the bus i already felt that i didn't want to get off the bus mm -hmm. i i was already saying to myself i really don't want to be here i don't want to i, I don't want to be here it, it just um i'm done with this tour i really don't want to get off the bus so i was kind of meandering along kind of taking pictures while everybody else was going ahead of me and I didn't want to go through this cave that that they were showing us. And as I was getting closer to the steps going down into like this circle, I started getting nauseous. And but it wasn't a nausea of throwing up food. It was a nausea of throwing up energy. And I started getting dry heaves which I was just starting to try to throw up, but it, there was nothing coming up. It was just energy. And I was getting very panicky because it was, it was overwhelming. And somebody called uh, Blair to see if he can help me because Blair channels to Bosch. And as soon as I saw Blair, I mean, it was like, he was a lifesaver. It was like being in the ocean and, and someone throw you a lifesaver. He grabbed me by the shoulders and I don't know what happened. And then he put his finger on my third eye and it felt as if I was being shot by an electrical bolt. I felt like I was being actually shot. And then I was like gone. So all I know is that it was a big blur and 
uh, things were happening around me, but I didn't really know what was happening. So I want to start first. Who was who's the first one that kind of noticed that something was going on? I don't know, but I there was some kind of commotion because we were all kind of looking around on the top of the mountain there. And then uh, I, I saw you looked funny. I said, something's wrong with Alva. Let's get down there and help. <laughs> and and uh, me and Tanya, who's a Reiki master, and I was like second level back then, uh, we went down there and she put her hands right on you. And I put my hands over you and my hands were shaking. I couldn't really see it in the video, but man, it felt like they were just going crazy, like jazz hands. <laughs> and uh, there was a lot of energy coming off of you. And um, it got to the point that my whole body was shaken by the time I disconnected with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, mm -hmm. that was when uh, Blair was saying, uh, he was talking to you. He said something like, uh, say what you're feeling and you started saying soul soul and then we all just chimed in you know yeah and at one point i'll never forget it i was looking at him and a like a cloud came out of his face and then jesus's face came out of the cloud and looked at me and went back in the cloud and then i was like did i just see that but it was like i recognized jesus Wow. he was there there was wow. some kind of serious spiritual uh situation going on because it wasn't just a bosh you know yeah. jesus stepped in too because it was a big deal what was going on with you there was yeah. a lot of dark energy coming out of that cave because somebody helped me sit down on a rock because i was just like my knees were giving out and uh i people were going in that cave i was like don't go in that cave i mean i felt the darkest energy in that cave and i uh, think there were a lot of uh, theories about that and different experiences about the darkness in that cave wow but yeah you had a complete <laughs> glazed over it was a dead look on your face you had no life in your eyes you know, it was a scary situation. I mean, I got chills just watching that video a few times head to toe. It was it was hardcore experience <laughs> observing it, you know. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was important, whatever was going on with you. Good. Who, who, so Laura, what did you experience? Well, at first I um I was really I didn't want to go down in that cave area. And um, I had had my insides were just jumping out of my chest to be in that space right there. That cave felt so, so bad and so rough and people were going into the cave and I knew I didn't want to go into the cave. So I thought you were having a reaction to the energy in the cave as well, because after after your episode, after all that happened, we all had a discussion and everybody saw and felt different things about that cave. So at that time, I thought, I just thought you were having a tremendous reaction with the energy in the cave. And, and that's what I, I felt. And so I knew when Blair went over to you that you were in good hands and he asked us to come around and give you the support. So that's why we all surrounded you giving you the energy and support to help hold you up. Yeah. But you, you could anything? clearly see you looked like your eyes were rolling back in your head and you had just like almost passed out. You could see that. And mm -hmm. even when, um, when he was there talking to you, you were just really out of it. Like you were barely there. It looked like you were about to pass out or fall down or, or as he was speaking to you and holding you up. And um, but then you knew there was a communication that he knew what was going on when he was speaking to you and helping you and just taking charge to help you through whatever the process was. But as an observer, I didn't know what the process was. I just was dealing with my own stuff with that energy of the cave. And I thought it had overwhelmed you. That that was my initial thought till we talked later. Yeah. But, uh, Did you see anything? 
did you see anything around uh, us or the cave or did you actually? Um, not around you, but what I knew that there was a lot of dark, um, dark souls there. And like I could feel souls crying out. And one of the gifts I have is that I help lost souls cross over. And I could just feel there were so many in there that needed help to cross over. And I got a little intimidated that I didn't know if I could handle that many at a time. And it just, I just kept staying back from the cave. Later, I did a writing that said I should have gone in there. I could have helped with that. But truly, that's what I thought you were um, dealing with was the heavy of that energy. That's what I thought you're, you're losing your, I mean, it's like all the, all the life went out of you. You just were going limp and just going down. And I thought it was overwhelming of the energy. Mm -hmm. And then Blair clearly knew what was going on as he was visiting with you and walked you through the ceremony and prayed for you as he was, as he was taking care of you. So we were just kind of following his lead in what he needed us to do. So we were all just trying to surround you with really strong, positive energy in that dark space right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jill, what did you see? Well, I didn't even go down to the bottom there because what happened was Sabrina was standing next to me and suddenly I heard, Alba, Alba, oh my gosh, Alba. And I looked down and you looked as if you were absolutely paralyzed in fear that whatever you had seen was so horrific that you were transfixed. It was like somebody had hit you with a stun gun and something in me said, you have to take a photograph. This has to be um, remembered. For some reason, I had to capture the moment and it's, and I felt so bad taking that photo because it's like taking a photo of an accident victim. You just don't do that. But I knew it had to be recorded. At exactly the same time, Sabrina was standing next to me and she said to me, do you see Jesus? Jesus is next to Alba. I said, I don't see Jesus. She said, but Joel, can't you see Jesus? He's right there. Uh -huh. He's in the smoke. I said, Sabrina, I can't see Jesus. And that's when um, Blair said, you know, and then we started walking down. But I hadn't even been down there. I hadn't, I didn't even know that there was a cave. And then what happened was when we all were around you, um, he said, could two people please escort you up the stairs? I grabbed your arm. And as I connected with you, I saw a huge rock with a split down the middle opening up into a cave. And they told me it happened in the cave. And they said the word sacrifice. So as I helped you up, I told you and you said yes, but I was the one doing the sacrificing. So because I was busy writing that book and I wanted to have the final chapter as Peru, I asked a few of them, anybody want to write in and tell us about things? Do you know, Bettina said she was in the cave with you. And she said to you and to Rena, oh my gosh, look at all this blood everywhere. And Rena said, don't worry about the blood. Look at this big black hand trying to grab me through the cave wall. And that's when everything happened to you. And that's when you came out and you were absolutely whatever. Later, when we got back after Peru had finished, I hypnotized Laura. And Laura was really troubled because she has that beautiful gift of helping people pass over. And she said to me, Jill, the energy coming from that was so overwhelming. And I knew I was supposed to help, but I couldn't. And it's been really playing on my mind, could we please look at that? And Laura, I don't know if you remember that part of your hypnosis, but they said that we in that group had so much light that we carried that all the souls that had been passed over in that cave 
we were well, able to ascend. Collectively, so we did. didn't have to wow. hold that anymore. And, you know, during the discourse, it said, Alba, um, you were not the same being that entered Peru as that exited yeah. Peru. Mm -hmm. And that's why you and I both had huge things happening to us there mm -hmm. simply because they needed you to have that new download, the new photonic structure, the new being to do the work that you needed to do ahead. Yeah. And yeah. that's all I can say. Thank you. Well, last week I completed my TVP course with Dr. Jose Luis Kabuli, and I was the last one to get a session from him. There were 14 of us and each one got a session with him and mine was the absolute last one. And now I know why, because it was not his typical session. But I wanted to know what had happened at that moment in the cave, you know, or outside the cave. I wanted to know what happened because once I started those dry heaves trying to throw up and I got hit, you know, with that it felt like a laser in my third eye. Uh, I don't know what happened after that. So I want to just go over uh, some of the things that that I jotted down from from this session that I had with him. After after Blair Blair was channeling, by the way, it's not Blair that was doing this. It was he was actually channeling spirit when he was doing this. I felt that. I actually left my body. My soul le actually left my body. And during this the session that I have, I could see that it was lifting just like a helicopter would lift right off. And I was watching everybody below me. And um, I felt that I was being taken by some, some loving beings, but I was taken to the ship. And Sabrina, in some of your sessions, you have talked about this ship. And I don't remember what session you first talked about this ship. It opened up a curiosity in me that I'd never had before. And that's why the last time we saw each other, I asked more about the ship because something was opened up in me. Some curiosity that I had never had about ships opened up. And there I was in the ship. And in front of me was me. There was another Alba in front of me. This one was seemed, and I can't even explain it older because I'm, I'm, I'm 65, but she seemed wiser. She seemed really much in control. And I felt like a, like a little kid next to her. She was so powerful. She basically said to me, you're, you're, it's done. You're, it's, it's done for you. You're, you're finished. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? She goes, your mission is, is done. And I was getting really upset because I said, well, what do you, what am, what's going to happen with my body? Like I have a lot of work to do, <laughs> you know, and I was getting really distraught and, and getting upset because she said, no, you're, you're finished. You're done. Uh, your mission as Alba is done. Cause she says, you know, it, it, don't worry about that. And all of a sudden this, huge light being came in the room. It was yellow, it was a light, yellow light, huge tower that took up like, it was huge. And it was just radiating this immense love, just an immense love. The room was just full of this love. This being was just radiating this love. And she says, this is, this is you also. We are all one. And and this is what's this is the, the Alba that's going to continue. And I kept saying, like, what about me? <laughs> I was crying and crying and saying, but me, I, I you know, I want to go back. <laughs> and she kept saying, No, you're done. It's like you're dismissed. And she kept saying, You're just gonna go rest. Just go rest now. You're gonna go rest. So 
from this being, I radiated this beautiful heart, this beautiful green light that was just pulsing. And it had, it had something that looked like eyes, but they weren't really eyes. It was just a beam of light, of yellow light. And this heart, all of a sudden, I see Sabrina. And she pops out and she's just, she's just standing there going, just laughing. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And I said, she has a twin too. She didn't say anything. Sabrina, you didn't say anything, but that's when I realized that basically all of the people who were around me were on that ship too. That we all had like duplicates. That's what I called it, a duplicate. It was like a twin that was on that ship. Can I interrupt you quickly? Yes. When we arrived in Cusco and you started introducing me to the other girls and suddenly you said to me, what do you see? And I started telling you about the spaceship that I was staring at looking in the lobby, remember? Yes. And I said, it's a AI, but it's a biological entity and how it was shaped. And then the cog in the front and all of us had to put our unks, our light, codes our keys of light in it and you said well what is it used for that spaceship that and i said oh that's where we that's our war room is like, like a war room it's like head office where we plan and strategize and i've never done that before just staring into space suddenly doing it and that's when christina said looked at you and said what is what is she talking about and I got so embarrassed and I said, huh, I'm just going to my room now. So that's, that's that same spaceship. Where it's the same spaceship. Yeah. So I realized that all of us were on that ship, but that we had fractals on earth. And, and um, so she said, she said, um, let's see. Something that I realized, and I, I kept trying to describe it. It's like, I said, it's not like, like we're puppets but we are connected to whoever it is on the ship and we are doing what needs to be done on earth for them. That's what I was getting. It's like, we are connected. We are, st we're still one, but we're just like an avatar really. And, and that's what Sabrina hologram. said. Yes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so uh, she said, she basically said, I'm just reading it that I finished my mission. That phase was over. And now this light was going to come to earth to finish what my mission was on earth. And she said, and, and what I saw is that this had so much more wisdom, so much more love. This was such a loving, powerful, wise light that, you know, I looked like this neck. I felt so little next to it because it was so powerful. And um, that I had to, you know, I had to come to this, to earth to learn a lot of stuff, but it was over. I was done. And so all of a sudden I felt my heart, the heart of, of Alba, the, 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 the shocked version. And my heart was like a little raisin. It was so battered compared to this beautiful being that had just walked in the room. And so all of a sudden I felt as if something shifted and all of a sudden i was looking out through the eyes of this being which was ginormous mm -hmm. and i was told that i would have the same memories there would be no difference because i was really we were all the same we were all the same beings we were just different parts you know as one so now um she tells me i have to go back and that is when I kind of woke up and I was sitting at a rock. I had um, Tanya next to me. I realized as this being that everybody there were my friends on the ship and that I recognized everybody. So I immediately just started saying, I give you my blessings. I give you my blessings. I give you my blessings. I give, it was like a shower of love that I was just giving all of you on, you know, there, because it was like, I was so happy that 
you know, you were on the ship, but you're also there. And I recognized all of you. So I kept saying, I give you my blessings. I give you my blessings. I give you my blessings. And I just kept saying that over and over again. I realized that I had a council. There was a council on the ship, a council of 13. Right. And so this council now gave me a message. They basically said, you're beginning your work again. So, um, fabulous. Yeah, so then they said, we, we, we want to uh, congratulate everyone who was uh, witnessing this rebirthing of mine. They wanted to thank you for being there. And they said they have a message, and I'd like to, to read this message. It says, um, well, I was being told that this chaos that we're going through is like when one burns the earth to, to, to sow again, to, to plant and that all of us who've been coming to this earth right now have been coming to sow a new earth and that everything must be burned first all the ways of thinking all the ways of educating all the ways of raising children all this must be burned and we must start again and these souls that who have come now from the light are here now to sow a new earth and that this is what many are doing like me and many admire me and now they've noticed a change in me. And it's because it's the love that I send now. It is the peace that I send now. And it was, it's not the same as it was before. And that I am in nature because I wanna give an example to the world that follows me, that this is how you must be. You must start again with nature, to be like nature, to think like nature, and to be at peace like nature. That everything comes everything comes to to nature nature doesn't have to ask everything comes to nature the water comes to nature the sun comes to nature the nutrients come to nature and everyone has to think like nature and that is the message that they have so they want to thank us for listening to them and to go in peace so beautiful what an experience Ooh, that's exciting yeah yeah so and you know you know Alba, it's so interesting that there we were in peru we had never laid eyes on each other not any of us you know and uh i mean i met jill, jill when um i read something on your channel and i get a, a message through facebook that jill channels and here's this person across the world and i said uh, she writes and I said so send me something that you write and whatever she sent was exactly what I had gotten but using different words and mm -hmm. it was so interesting and then we finally meet in Peru and so for us to be right around you during that is so interesting and here yeah. we are continuing on you know right. it was fabulous yeah, and after Peru, what happened is that the moment I got to my home, I couldn't fit inside of my home. It was too small. It was and too. You painted it. You had yeah. to put the river. They said the fresh energy. You had to. You had to paint away the old energy because it wasn't yeah. you anymore. It wasn't me. I didn't like the same colors. I didn't like the same everything. I, even even the style of of how I dress or just everything changed everything it, it was i didn't like the same things as i liked before and i felt i felt a lot more comfortable around people which i never did before um i was extremely introverted and now i'm more open to people which almost freaks me out because remember i still have the me same memories and same uh you know in your syncrasies, but now it's like this album says, well, what's the problem? You know, what's the problem with that? And, uh, and I had to move to nature. After that, I didn't fit in Miami anymore in in, in a place where there was so much traffic, there were so many people, I was searching for the open and and, and I didn't realize that that was the message that I had been given by the counselors uh when i when i came into this body that to be in nature and so i had that urge to be in nature and i now i know where it came from they were telling me you have to be like nature so one of the things that i noticed i was thinking about this is 
if you recall, this is when I really started getting into the frequencies. Yes. I'm yes. tuning for it, yes. right? And I realized that this is how I was sending out that those frequencies, the, that energy that came from this being, that love that I was actually sending this stuff out. And I had, I had almost like a, a need to gather people around. And what I saw in, in this session is that each one of us was like a flame. The light workers were actually flames. And what I was told is that everywhere I went on earth, I was depositing my energy. That's why I had to travel all around the world. It wasn't about hypnosis sessions. It was actually about depositing that frequency that I was supposed to deposit. But being that I couldn't travel anymore, I was now sending that energy through the internet, through the gatherings, through the, 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 the frequency sessions. And that's why I felt such a need to do these sessions because people were getting a lot more than they thought they were getting. Mm. You see? So it was almost like I was co connecting the flames from all over the world and igniting them even more. Because you remember, you used me as a guinea pig that first time with the tuning forks and all the information I received. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's really connecting people. It's incredible that it, yeah. they don't, you can't underestimate those sessions. Exactly, exactly. And, and I have had sessions where I know that my voice, the frequency of my voice sends out information, sends out something. And so as they're receiving all of the information about each frequency and all of that, and we do a meditation, all of that is part of the frequency. So it's really exciting to think about, the, and, and it, it's really cool also that it took me 10 months to get my internet going again. Um, when I moved to Micanopy, I had ordered my, my Starlink system because there was no uh, internet in this area, high speed internet. And I had to wean myself off of technology. Why to be in nature? And now I'm slowly coming back and, and doing some more Zoom sessions. But my whole thing is to bring people into nature now, bring people to me to be in this. I, I call it like my, my chapel of trees. It's just church of trees. And Laura and Sabrina, you've been here. You, you know how it feels to be in this place. It's magical. It is. It is beautiful. It talks to you. Every yeah. time I'm there, that's why we end up channeling elementals because they're so powerful where you are. <laughs> yeah. So that message from the counselors about being in nature is why now I'm pushing so much for people to come here and get the healing that they need from nature also. Not just not just having the session here just to have the session, but really just even being in the presence of this majestic um, scenery is just it's just wild. So Alba, I was just thinking about people watching this who perhaps have had a walk-in experience themselves and not really knowing much about walk-ins before. Maybe this is going to make them more comfortable. Do you think that all walk-ins are part of who you are? So you're not getting a strange walking as such. Yeah, I think it's different. My my experience was a little bit different in that it is the same soul yes. pretty much that has been split. Uh, there are other people who have walk-ins um, in which they are done with their mission and another soul wants to come in and use their vessel to complete their mission, but they don't have the same memories. They don't have um, it's basically a different soul that has already made an agreement to come in, but they're different. They, okay, so it's not everybody's not the same. No, um, no, and, and yeah, it's not the same thing. In my case, I don't like to call myself a walk in because I feel like I, I was upgraded. <laughs> That's how I feel. It was like an upgrade because it's really the same, it's the same source, which is the Alba. 
uh, which maybe you call her a higher self, or I don't know, Sabrina, you came up with something who, you know, who this is on the ship. The big uh, kahuna. Well, I, I called it a mother soul. I called it a mother soul when, when I tried to describe it. That's like, it. we're the uh, ring doorbell for them. Okay. <laughs> for the higher. That's how, that's how it was shown to me. Like, you know, we're representing and holding space and we're still an extension of them. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's how it was put to me. Easy Lehman drums. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's what I think is different. Some people have walk ins that are totally different, but mine I don't like to call it that I think it's just a, a, a rebirthing of that soul in a, in a much more loving, much more powerful, much more wise version. So Alba, since you did that session, the hypnosis session, and you got to see yourself and feel yourself because you know in the sessions you really get a true sense of walking it how does that feel for you does it make you feel just more settled in or more willing to stay in your power now that you got to see the big version of alba versus the smaller version of alba does it help you accept yourself better i mean not that you had this struggle but you said that there was such a huge difference that you got to see the powerful being that you are and so many people don't have that opportunity to understand the powerhouse that they are inside of their body so how did right. that part of it change you well what what i realized after coming back from peru is that i was much more calm about things once i made a decision to do something i knew it i just i knew it was just a matter of time that it would be done i didn't have that urgency that i have to get something done i knew that once i created that vision in my mind it would happen it was just it would just fall into place i didn't have that doubt anymore that things would happen so now in my everyday life when i have to do something and i know it has to be done i'm not freaking out about who's going to do it when it's going to be done and how fast it's going to be done i'm very calm about yes it has to be done the right people will show up and the thing will happen and it will get done when it's divine timing so i don't have that feeling anymore of i have to get it done um, you know, I came from the corporate world and I was very, you know, type A and doing stuff that you have to get things done and, you know, a lot of effort. And now it's more like I will it into being and it just happens. And all I do is have have a thought in my mind and then someone will come up with, hey, have you ever thought of doing this? Maybe we can do that for you. And it's like, oh, yeah, that would be a great idea <laughs> <laughs> where I've already seen it in my mind. So it just it just flows more but i know it's so important when i have an idea in my mind that it be done that it's important that it does get done and that's why we've been doing the gatherings you know um laura and and i have done a couple of them sabrina did one uh gatherings here in in my place because I know that we have to get the people together and we have to share and we have to share this light and we have to build our own light. And I know that with the energy that I saw of what was emitting from me, um, it was just amazing that, that it was amazing what I saw on that. That show. is what's so powerful that you now have no doubt, zero no. doubt, you know, because this is such a, change to think of us as a avatar versus just you know living your life on earth here so it's yeah. interesting that the doubt is now there's no yeah. doubt yeah and i spent a lot more time believe it or not talking to god now i didn't do that before um i will i will go out to my dock and um, don't take any technology with me and it's like okay god we need to have a talk 
And I do that a lot more often now. I, I didn't do that very often before, but now that is my form of meditating, just having a conversation and, and working things out. And I have a lot more faith now that I did before. It's almost like I have a higher connection than I did before. Really strange to describe that. Uh, but since, that's, your session, since your session, you're noticing that? Well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Since the session, I, I, I feel the need to every day go out and just sit in nature and talk to God. Let's have a conversation. It's time to talk. And I, I, I just have a conversation as if that was part of, you know, that was like my dad or my mom or, you know, it's just a part of me that is part of my, my family. You know, I feel like I'm part of a bigger family than I was before. What a beautiful experience to be able to see your soul in that way. You know, that's huge. That's just so beautiful to see that. That's yeah. that's that's yeah. powerful. And yeah. it's humbling. Yes. It's humbling, yes. Yes. Yeah. Very awesome. So, so that's why right now I'm I'm churning up the, the frequency sessions again because I know how powerful they are. And whatever I can do to you know, assist my clients during a session, you know, I know that that energy is going to help them. Um, and so I've been using the tuning forks a lot during my sessions because it does help. There is you something. Know, the, tuning, the tuning forks are a trusting process, you know, intuitively you get told which forks to pull out. And if you hear them in your common sense ears, like that's not that big a deal. But what you know is it is really creating a lot of change within that person's cells yeah. and it's so like just an hearing, you're like so that's just a little noise but it's very effective very effective it almost feels like it's it's putting you back and calibrating you to the right uh frequency even even if i don't know what it is the client knows mm -hmm. how to align you know what i think it is alba i think it's um you know when i went to castle hill and I showed you the rocks and you were there with me through the thing. And we were told with the space arcs and the stones that all of these are now going to start activating and they're going to start humming. And that's when the earth will actually um, ascend, start ascension. Yep. And I think what's happening is I was just thinking, I was just sort of getting the message when you were just talking about how your job has changed. Yep. So the frequency, when you give frequency sessions in a group or singular, yeah. what you're really doing is you're activating their God code. Mm -hmm. So they said, remember that you were the conductor for the tone, for the orchestra. So what you're doing is you're bringing the music back and you're getting the song to be sung. And every person has their unique song, their unique tune. So now you in all your greatness have come down in this new strength and by using the instruments that you are using as it vibrates, they then are beginning to vibrate mm -hmm. into the fullness and the beauty of who they are so that they can accomplish their missions. Yeah. So not only do you do, do certain people activate a space arc or a a stone, mm -hmm. but you are activating the frequencies within you are getting them once again to align to their blueprint so mm -hmm. that they can be the best they can be. And that's a big job. Yeah. And begin remembering who they are. Who they are, exactly. And that's what I mm -hmm. saw that each person that is connected to me in some way is this flame. I saw them all as flames all over the world. And they were, wherever they were, it was like I was helping them with their flame. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So as they, as oh, they watch. You're building a, a light army. It's a light army that you're building. This came up one of my sessions and you're going to be gathering all these light workers these light souls too yeah. i saw all those flames and some people had little flames and some people were like on fire you know 
So the big person must have been you on fire. <laughs> yep. You're gathering these people. At, you're building up the flame in them. And then you. Yep. Yeah. Too. You're, it's a worldwide move. It is a worldwide movement. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what, whatever the job of mission of this new album, this upgrade 2.0, whatever it is, it has to do with helping all of the other souls get that potential. Like, you know, like, um, like Sabrina says, you, I really am activating them too. So I guess it's a, it's different than I was doing before because before I didn't have the the flame as the 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 soul potential that I had before. So so I'm going to be working more uh with you Sabrina on getting more information uh about this stuff too, you know, in future sessions and with Laura, you know, uh and obviously Jill, we've already been working on this. So that's 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 my idea is to get you guys to to keep uh, feeding more more information, so I could help help the troops out there. <laughs> with, you know, Alba, it. I think um, the frequency is coming in, so it matters so much now. I, um, you and I talked, but I am singing everywhere I go, to every animal I see, to every place I am. I'm having to tone it down because. Um, and, and the animals will look at you just like so soothed and so peaceful. And it's like you're giving them a healing. It's like their structure inside of them is lining up and they have this power that comes through them after they hear the tones. You know, I do it with my voice. You do it with your tuning forks. And But, but I mean, it's ridiculous. So I went to the zoo the other day and I'm singing a different song to every animal when nobody's around. I'm like, Laura, you look like you are just, but the animals were so responsive. They are so in tune yes. and listening. So the frequencies are huge now, helping people realign to themselves. Yeah. So. yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll be doing more of those more frequency sessions again, some uh, at night for me, so I can uh, connect with those down under in New Zealand, Australia, Hawaii, those people who are in a different time zone and doing morning ones for people who are in the East Coast all the way to uh, Europe and South Africa, they'll be able to tune in. So I'm trying to, to be able to get this out to as many people as possible as a recipient of your frequency sessions they are beautiful they Thank are you. just when you finish you're just so soothed and so peaceful for us after you finish with your sessions they're powerful thank so, you very thank powerful you. yeah mm -hmm. and i think you're very brave to do this alba i think um you should be congratulated mm -hmm. trailblazer huh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought about a lot about putting this out to, to everybody because it was such a shocking experience and I didn't know quite how to explain it. But after I got the the session and was able to see it from a different perspective, I felt I had all the information now to present it in a in a nice you know, a nice way where I understood what it was all about rather than just, hey, I died in Peru. <laughs> you know? And you know, Alba, as people are attracted to your YouTube channel and are drawn to you, that is by natural design that they come in. I mean, you're not sitting in anyone down and forcing them to start listening to your sessions. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are finding you mm -hmm. and it's really clicking with them. So that's what's so beautiful for your mm -hmm. tribe to be building because that synchronicity of them coming and listening to your sessions and building it that way, they're meant to be here. I mean, mm -hmm. if it was of no avail to them, they would not be listening or tuning in or following. So that's yeah. what's the beauty too, is that innately they're like, I don't know why, but I can't stop watching this. You know, it's it's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's what happens is that their flame, they start growing, uh, they start waking up and they start realizing that they're not what they thought they were. Life was not what they thought they were. Strength. 
Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is so exciting. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> it is. It is. So I'm going to be continuing working with Jill every once in a while doing sessions. Laura will be will be doing more sessions here. It's pretty hot now. So we're not going to be doing anything live outside or we'll be all dead. <laughs> Everybody be just melting. Yeah, so, and Sabrina, yeah. we're going to be working more as we connect because we're only a, a, an hour and a half away from each other. So we'll be we'll be working more together. And thank you for joining me in this and and putting the puzzle pieces together from from all of your points of view. And um, I'm going to put on the video different the different uh, ways that you can contact Jill and Laura and Sabrina if you wanted to contact them in the future. And uh, I want to thank everyone who who came here and uh, sat through all this this whole time. And uh, I hope you got something from it. So thank you very much for watching. Much love to you. Bye bye. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.